Right guys, so as the title of the video says, I will be changing the start motor in my car. What I want to preference this video in saying is that I have never changed a start motor in a car in my life. Apparently it's not too complicated and I have had a look and it's basically two bolts and then a pipe I think. But I have to disconnect the battery to not like shock myself or the clutch or the gearbox or something to that extent. Uh, yeah, but it should be quite easy. So I was supposed to bring a tripod, but I forgot. So I'll film what I can, but the first thing we need to do is take off the induction kit. So let's start with that. Let's get into this. Right guys, so I'm not gonna lie. I got the whole thing apart. Every single bolt was taken off until I got to, if you look there, so you see that small nut and then you see there's like a, a wire going to it. And then you see that if you look really closely, there's another nut behind this wire. You can see like a slight flange. So that nut there that goes, that actually holds onto the starter motor, as you can see there, you know, there's the engine block or whatever. There's the starter motor, there's, yeah, there's two nuts on each other right down there. And basically those two, the one closest to the starter motor and the block, is absolutely seized on. I tried everything. I even got underneath the car so I could have more leverage to yank it and I could not get it off. So we're gonna reconvene. I'm gonna get my dad involved and probably a, uh, a gun to zap it off. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you obviously in like two minutes, but for me, it's probably gonna be a couple of days. But yeah, see you later. Right guys, so we are back in the same location. It is day two. Uh, the only difference is I popped around to my dad's and I basically got his massive bar. He had like a big breaker bar and uh, I got him to do it basically. So yeah, so he broke the nuts for me, then retightened them so I could come back today and show you exactly how to take it off. I also remember my tripod today so I can literally show you what size sockets you'll need and what bolts you need to take out. So yeah, let's get into this round two. Let's start by getting the induction kit out of the way. We need to get rid of this. The heat plate, there you go, that's one bolt and then I believe I put another, there's another one down there but before I get that I'll take that off, there we go, that's all loose, that should just pop off now, there we go, lovely, well this will be different obviously because if you don't have an induction kit you'll have your standard air filter here in the way and, oh I'm turning that the wrong way, there we go, um, and the main things to notice if you have your standard air filter in the way, yeah, these two bungs here, to get to them, you have to take off the whole, all the, obviously the screws that go around the standard plastic air filter to get them off. I then think there's another screw obviously back here that you need to take off. And then you literally just need to lift the whole thing off of these two bungs. Um, it can feel a bit more complicated than it is, but yeah, it is that simple. Right, the next thing we need to do is undo the bolt that is now here which is a 10 mil. Yeah, there we go. So that's a 10 mil. Get that one off. That means I can take this plate off. I can take this plate off because I need to go get underneath it. Bung, bung, that's me up there. Then I can wiggle that one out. There we go. So that's the two plates done. Oh, I need to remove the positive battery terminal. Now I did ask my dad why you need to do this, but it's something to do with, because uh, I've forgotten already, which is why I'm not saying why, but um, it's something to do with when you take off the bolts off of the starter motor, you don't want it doing something. There it is. Right, so that is what we're removing today. Uh, I will start with all the bolts I can get to, and then we'll do the one underneath. So first things first is I'm just going to move that bit, that little bracket plastic bit back. I have a weird feeling, a lot of these were like 13s. And they're like really odd. Yeah, 13. Really odd sizes. Oh, that's not loose enough yet. Don't want to drop it, don't want to drop it. Hey, there we go. Right, so that's that. Whatever that does, that's off. I need to take this clip off, which 
I tried to do yesterday and I couldn't figure out. Dad said that red little toggle, I don't know if you can see that on camera, there's a, yeah, there's a little red toggle. It's like the back of a headlight switch when you plug them in and you have to lift up the red thing, not have it down, and then it should sort of lift up. But I did try and do that yesterday and it wasn't coming off. So we'll try it again quickly now. Oh, actually, I saw on the new one, yes, there we go. It's there. Right, so, got it off. Bloody genius. I did hit my hand there, that hurt a little bit. Right, so now let's get that one off. That, I believe, is also a 13. Am I, is this full on to tighten? What's going on here? It has fallen, wait, what? Ow, there we go. These should all be reasonably loose because I did them up, but I didn't tighten them all the way up, back up, because I didn't need to, because I knew it was coming back off. Can you see on camera? Yeah, so there's another bolt there that's the one i could not take off that was welded right on although my dad did it but that's not the point so is that a bolt with a thread in it that's crazy well it's not crazy but it's just not seen that before yeah look at the state of that well the only thing that we have left to do is the bottom one so let's jack the car up and do the ones underneath now but as you can see wait for it there that is now there see so that bolt has a thread on it thread on it and I've got it all the way out. So now I'm going to go underneath the car and do the same one on the other side. All of them have been taken off. So yeah, let's go. Right guys, so I just took off the bottom bolt. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll show you how. This is how ridiculously massive it is, by the way. Yeah, huge. Although it doesn't look that big, but it is pretty big. Like in comparison to like a normal bolt, it's like pretty big. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've taken this off. Uh, now I'm going to take, hopefully, pull the other one off, or the whole start motor off, but the issue is, is my fingers are absolutely filthy, so I can't touch my camera to move it. So, fingers crossed, I'm just gonna take this off and suddenly show you the old one. But yeah, right, right, it's out, it is out. I'm just trying to not drop another bolt. There we, oh, almost dropped it. Wow, that was bad. Voila, the old starter motor, which does look proper grim. I don't know if there's any signs on how dead this is, but uh, yeah, it looks gross. So let's get the new one, line it up, push it in. I will admit these like teeth bit look fine. They're very clean on just the edge though. I don't know if you can see that, hold on. See that, they're just clean at the edge. So I don't know if that's something that I should, you know, that's worth cons being concerned about, I don't know. But yeah, so that's the, old one. I'm going to have to put it in the jack box temporarily. Oh. Alright, bottom bolt in, time to do the top bolt. Everything basically, I would film it but I can't touch my camera, but basically everything I've just done I'm now doing in reverse. So I'm going to put the bottom bolts back on, put the top bolts back in, the clip back on and Potentially, we might even get a cold start because I literally turned the car on, trickled it down the lay-by, uh, down to here where I film, um, which is literally like two minutes away, and then it's just sat there the entire time. So, it might have enough time to cool back down, so we might get a fresh cold start to see if it's going to help with the stumbling. I have like a stumbling on start-up at the moment, which is the whole reason I'm changing it. It sort of goes, duh, 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 and then it sort of kicks, kicks in. It just sort of turns over and doesn't really kick fire so i don't know if it's like a lazy start mode it's not turning the engine fast enough or if it's other problems um like maybe some faulty injectors i don't know but what's weird is when the car's warm it fires up straight away so it's sort of like just on a cold start it struggles so i don't know what that would be but anyway so everything i'm doing i'm now doing in reverse so i'll move you across to above the thing but i don't i don't know if i'll um be able to show you what I'm doing specifically. But yeah, fingers crossed, we can just put it all back together now. So, I've officially taken off the old starter motor, put the new starter motor in, and put everything back together, and this will be the first, probably cold start on the new starter motor. I hope so hard that this doesn't start. But even if it does, it's gotta be better than the old one, because the old one looked rank. So, let me just move that out of the road. And let's get a first start up. Here we go. Big moment. I didn't reconnect the battery completely. My bad. Wow. 
Why does that sound so weird? Scared, scared now. Right guys, I want to say one last thing about this starter motor. So I bought one from Euro Car Parts and it was a reconditioned one, but obviously it should work as new because they've taken it apart, fixed it. So I fitted it, turned it on, and uh, as you saw in the last clips of that video, it just wouldn't fire, it just wouldn't work, it wouldn't work. When it finally fired, it would sometimes stay on, so it would sit there going like the start motor was still trying to turn the car over. And then other times, like you saw in the video, at the end of that last clip, it just wouldn't turn on at all. So I was like, what the hell is going on? I've just paid 130, 40 pounds, whatever it was, for the start motor for it to not work. This is my old one, I'm uh, obviously holding it in a towel, so I've touched about three of these now, and I'm fed up with my hands today. So yeah, I uh, took it back, had a bit, bit of a go on the phone and said, it doesn't work, get me another one. And to be fair, they did, they got me another one. Uh, unfortunately, I had to order it in, so I did it on the Saturday, and I couldn't pick up a new one because I didn't have it, so I had to order it in for Monday. Monday, I then fitted it, and uh, it works. But I thought what I'd quickly do is break down every single bolt on this starter motor, because as much as I filmed it, it's probably easier for me to just literally show you exactly what size and what bolts you need to do, uh, what you need to remove to fit this starter motor. But yeah, so I'm just gonna finish this video now by explaining every single bolt you need to fit the starter motor. Right, let's do it. Right guys, so let's say this is the starter motor in the engine bay, you're looking down at it, you're technically looking at down at it like this. So the first things you see are the starter motor like this. You have this bolt here, which is a 13 mil. So you take the 13 mil off and then you slide the thing that sort of attaches it off. You then get a flat headed screwdriver underneath because there's a clip right there, you can see it right there. So there's a clip there, you get a flat headed, flat headed screwdriver, lift it up, pull it out, nice and easy. So that is those two done. Then it comes over to the big bolts that, are, uh, that physically hold it on here. So there's a 13 mil bolt that holds on the 18 mil, which is the massive bolt that goes all the way in. So you literally take the 13 mil off and then you take the 18 mil out and then it's the same underneath, so you have to go under the car, you get, take the 13 mil off, take the 18 mil out, and then boom, you can just take the whole thing off. It really is that simple. The only faff is you will have to take the air box out, or your intake if you have an aftermarket intake like I did. But yeah, so that's really the only faff bit. And then you just slide it on, you put, you hold the bolt in and sort of slide it in because there's another like wire that gets in the way so yeah so you put the bolt in you slide the whole thing into place then you sort of tease it on get it caught and then like tighten it a little bit do the same on the bottom tighten it put all the bolts in at the bottom then you come back to the top put the wire that's here back on and then put the nut the 30 mil nut back on then the clip back on and then boom you've changed your starter mode and it really is that easy. It really, I, uh, it really isn't that hard. I did it at work on my lunch break because I had to pick it up on the way to work on the Monday morning and I thought I could do this in a lunch break. And I did it, I changed it in 25 minutes. So the first time that my, uh, I took it to the garage and they sort of had a look at it. The second time, obviously I did it as I showed you in the video. And uh, they, yeah, it took me about half an hour to an hour faffing about with it. Uh, and then yeah, finally, I figured out what to do, exactly how to do it, and it only took me 25 minutes. So practice makes perfect, you will get faster and, e and you'll find it easier each time. And uh, I've reckon enough, the longest bit is just getting to it, like taking all the like, air box out and then putting it all back in afterwards. Actually doing it itself, other than the fact that the two 18 mil bolts were really seized, so you had to get like a massive breaker bar and go poof, and like crack it. I got my dad to do it, but that's not the point. But yeah, uh, just to fit it, and then yeah, here we are, third starter motor, because that's my original, which I need to take back. Then I had the new one, the reconditioned one, which didn't work. And now I've got the current one, which does work. I still have a bit of a stumbling issue, but what's weird is it's like, because my car has fired incorrectly for so long, it almost needs to relearn how to start up correctly with the correct starter motor. So when the starter motor properly fires, it literally goes woof and starts, but it's like da 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 boom. So that's weird. So I still need to figure out that. It sounds like a timing issue. Maybe the, it's not igniting properly, I don't know. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.